Kim was a uh, non-verbal until I was about five, six, and I was starting to kind of like come out with big conversations and and I think because I was speaking that broke Kim's speech on and um, uh, and I think because there was only five years between me and Kim, me made us very close. Kim was always quite volatile with me because I was the I was the baby, I was the baby, and she didn't really quite like that that I was the baby, um, and because like as I say, she had a temper, um, but then when my mum passed in twenty ten, Mary, Mary passed in twenty ten, my dad passed in two thousand and one, um, when my mum passed away, she had asked me when she'd first found out she'd got cancer and that if anything was going to happen to her. She was 70 when she passed away. Um, she'd, she'd kind of asked me to sort of kind of take on Kim. Take on Kim. That was her words. She went, Daniel, let me do it. I want you to look after Kim. Meaning, no meaning that she had to come and live with me or anything, but that I, I had to take her place. My mum went every Sunday without fail. For the time that Kim went into the flat, the only time that she wasn't it was regular clockwork was when she was first diagnosed with cancer. But within that time, it took us nine years of Kim being in uh, at Cargom in Muir House. Um, it took us ten, nine to ten years to get her to sort of start coming up to the house and no realise it was still the same house that she'd moved out of. Because for years, Kim always referred to our house as home. And that was really gut wrenching and heart, can just heartbreaking to watch. My mum sort of kind of like saying, "Kim would be say every time you went to see Cam, she would be, I'm going home tomorrow. I'm going home tomorrow. I'm going home tomorrow," because she obviously missed the closeness of our family. Um, like as I say, I, I lived all my life with my mum till she passed away. I've only started to independently live myself since twenty the end of twenty ten. Um and there's there's a there's a crutch to my story to in two thousand and eight I think it was May the first May the first or May the second in two thousand eight. I was diagnosed with Asperger syndrome. And for people that don't know what Asperger syndrome is, it's everybody's heard of autism. But everybody has negative or don't understand what autism is. Now as a person we ha- so it's high functioning autism I sort of understand but there's still some things that I would struggle to explain to you that you would think you would look at me and think oh she's perfectly normal she's intelligent she, she'll no struggle anyone that really really knows me know that up until two thousand and seven I was the person you see sitting here um, 2007-2008 I started to change things and thank God my mum seen me um, trying to take on things that for whatever reason I'd begun to struggle with I also have an anxiety and a panic disorder and I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder just because I was bullied quite a lot um, I think probably because I'm naturally ginger and I had freckles and I was quite a wee brashy little git when I was younger, which is probably the as the, the, the autism. Um Asperger syndrome is a it's a form of high functioning autism. I will name you four people that have high functioning autism. Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook. Second, Susan Boyle, Scottish singer, megastar. That's two. Three, Daryl Hannah, actress. Four, Dan Aykroyd, actor. Temple Grandin, the person that discovered how to slaughter um, cattle. Check it out if you've never heard of her. Just type her in, you'll find her. And that's five. And there's a lot more of people with high function and autism that have done amazing things. So, but there is different levels because autism is on a spectrum. 
you'll have your non-verbal autistic people. That would be sort of kind of like Rain Man. That's your kind of what people consider autism is. And then you've got us on the higher end. And that's how, and there can be people in the middle who are sort of kind of like, no so good verbally, but still quite clever. So there, there's there's a whole spectrum. Um, the, 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 the medical and the all difficult facts about autism is it's believed to be genetic really related. Now, I can only comment on my family situation. On my father's side, when I was diagnosed, my mum went in independently from me uh, within the diagnosis process and talked about my dad and my grandpa on my dad's side. Um, and the... Per the the person that diagnosed me had to say to my mum right there and then, well, do you know where Michelle gets it from then? And she went, where? And she went, I think that, me so, we, knowing for a fact, because he's no longer here, they assume my dad had Asperger's syndrome. Now, for people that knew Alan Hogg Senior, you would probably say that, because he, he knew something about everything. He wasn't he the he was eccentric. I will say that about my dad. But my dad was an intelligent man. Maybe not the most confident, but could put on confidence. So this is where the but was always highly strong. So that's the anxiety side of things. And my grandpa, so my grandpa Hogg, meaning my dad's dad, he was kind of the same thing, but an intelligent man again because, as far as I know, he never went to college or university or anything. But was a train driver. So, was intelligent. But then again, the side of the eccentric side. So, they assume that it comes from my dad's side. And this kind of links up a bit. Because my cousin, on my dad's side's son, has Asperger's. And that sort of kind of led us to the, right, let's get this sorted. There is a few other people that may or may not have autism or spectrum things in the family. So that's my understanding of it. Um, there are sensory issues with people with autism. It can be they can't stand noise or they love to, they love loads of noise or they can't stand bright lights or they really love bright lights or can they, they hate smells of strong scented perfumes and there's all different things and these lead to sensory overloads and the misconception way or what I believed happened in the past before Asperger's was given a diagnosis uh, given a, given an actual name which was in 1992 um, Hans Asperger in 1942 43 um, in Austria had described what the what was believed as autis, aut, autistic children, the non-verbal ones, but then these ones that were like, oh, wait a minute. And it was previously they assume a lot of people that in the, the 50s, 60s onwards were misdiagnosed with schizophrenia or personality disorders, and really it is high-functional autism. But if you know anything about great adventures and great people in history, you will find that, well, A, Albert Einstein, they say had high-functional autism. Isaac Newton, high-functional autism. Of course, everybody knows about Van Gogh and his schizophrenia. But now, people are assuming that he was high-functional autism. So you're great artists, you're creative people, you're inventors. They are probably on the higher end of the spectrum, like myself. But the I, not to say my intel, I have a high intelligence level, but my social skills or my ability to socialise is one of the things that I find so difficult. And this is probably when I made the decision to become a singer. I think that's why I've done the auditions. There, there has to, there's a method to the madness, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, it was kind of like, oh, I'll do YouTube videos because if I'm putting it out on YouTube and so many, it's out there. Anybody can see it in the whole wide world. So 
the negative comments. Now, I take them on, on my stride because I'd rather you say I know or hate or love. I just want people to be honest. So I started the YouTube channel just to get my used to performing with my eyes open and just kind of like putting it out there. And then done the auditions for to see kind of face to face. Then started singing to my support workers and just people, general people. And I was like, just can sing. I would sing every day. Um, and the one, the, the first person to encourage me was called Rose. She was my support worker. And she'd done, and she'd been in amateur dramatics, and she'd been to university and everything. And she was like, "Shell, I've done. I think it was Show Me Heaven." And she went, "Oh my God, Michelle, you really can sing." But it, it's oh, I've skipped a part there. It, it kind of started in the um, when Kim passed away. I had planned my mum's funeral for like right down to the last detail, but with Kim, it was just so. And I hate saying this because my mum's my mum, but Kim had hit me a lot harder. I think because I took on the role of looking after her, it's going to sound ter it's going to sound terrible and it's going to sound so disrespectful to my mum. But and I said this to a couple of my support workers at the time. I'm saying because I have don't have any children, she became like my daughter to me. And she was always going to be my sister and all the rest of it, but the bond became more motherly like, um, more paternal. So when Kim passed away, I was just, I knew it was coming and I'd prepared myself for it. And she had fought so bravely twice before, and she she never had, never had severe health issues until she hit 40. Um, and I think it's more, it's no nothing to do with cerebral palsy because people with cerebral palsy could live to a good age. Um, I think it was more to do with the coverture of the spine was getting too, was pressing on one of our lungs really heavily. And basically she didn't have two lungs. She had like one and a half because of the coverture of the spine. Which the proper medical name is scoliosis. Um, and so I was so kind of like, couldn't he plan the funeral? So we sort of kind of, I'd picked the reading. I'd picked the, what what we wanted to be the reading at the funeral. And I'd kind of like swiffered through the idea. I think it was on the Sunday or the Monday. It was down in my sister Kay's house. And I'd kind of like just say to myself, right, I want to sing. I want to sing it comes through now. And I'd... Because I'd, I'd um, got Love Can Build a Bridge played at my mum's and Irish Eyes by Daniel O'Donnell and there was, was it two songs? Aye, that's the two songs. And I'd forgot that my mum would always loved Fools of Gold. And Kim loved Fools of Gold and I thought, right, I'm going to sing Fools of Gold by Eva Cassidy, uh, written by Sting, but I love Eva Cassidy's version and my mum loved Eva Cassidy's version. So I was like, right, I'm going to sing Feels of Gold. So I sang it in front of my sister. She went, I'd do that. But then as the time dragged on, there was, I never got around to organising who would, who would play with me, how to do it and whatever. So my sister said she would do the reading that I'd picked out with me. So me and Kay were going to do the reading. And then the day before the actual funeral, I remember Kay going, I didn't know the reading. I said, well, I know the reading. And she's like, well, I want to read a poem. So Kay had, Kay had written a poem. Lost the poem in the morning of the funeral. And I ended up having to do the reading myself. So I chickened out to Singing Fields of Gold. And this is going to come back because this is a lot more, um, a lot more to do with the story. So that was getting me into the frame of mind date I want to sing. Because I've always wanted to be a singer and to learn how to act. Um, or a performer even. There you go. Uh, but my confidence and my, my, my anxiety and post-traumatic stress and probably my autism have all got in the way. Um, but with the right support and just just baby, basically surviving life circumstances. Like to lose my mum was probably 
what started me and then in between that Kim had got really ill and was in intensive care twice and I lost my brother-in-law Graham and so these are massive things and then to lose Kim you were like well I'm still here whereas in the past for about 14 I'd attempted suicide many 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 times many times I'm actually grateful and lucky to be here I came close a few times um, just because I just hated the way I it wasn't it what I thought about myself but I used to think people used to think oh she's this and she's that and whatever and I suppose what I've learned in the last five years is that I'm a geek I don't care and a fan girl and you might call me sad and I don't give a to I don't give a toss what people think about me anymore and I think that's to do with age because obviously I'm going to be 40 this year anyway so after Kim's funeral and I'd made the decision to go for the voice um, it just ha just so happened that my cousin Danielle was getting married in Mallorca and due to sort of kind of like my sort of kind of just issues I just never I always went on holidays with family or friends the one thing that I did independently go somewhere my mum was still living and it was I went to I went to Somerset to see Will and Gareth at Butlins from 2002 I think it was um, and I didn't know them for Adam but I knew them for talking to them on a Will Young Forum website and I went and I enjoyed myself but other than that this was the biggest thing I ever done so I went to Mallorca Unbeknownst to me, we were going up this big, massive, massive mountain. Thanks to Danielle, to get, but this cha the chapel was just so, so beautiful. It was 1400 and something, and it was an old monastery um, in Mallorca. And I know why she picked it, because it was so beautiful, but I was terrified of heights before. I was terrified of heights. We were on, the, we were on this big, massive bus because it's a big, big, big family. It was a small family wedding compared to what usually Irish weddings were, but it's a select crowd. Um, and I was luckily, lucky enough to be able to attend. Um, and I've got amazingly talented second cousins, Michaela, Abby, and they're all so beautiful. All my cousins, whether it be my Uncle John's side or my Uncle Mac. Or my auntie Gracie, my auntie Bridget, and my uncle David, and my auntie Carol. The oh, my cousins! I love my cousins, every one of them, and I think I've got about twenty-eight of them. So there you go, and they've all, most of them have all got kids now. So you imagine how many second cousins I've got. I didn't even know how. I didn't even know where to count. So, um, but it was seeing how talented they were. Abby and Michaela had done the singing for Daniel's wedding, for their aunt. And I was like, oh my god, that was just so beautiful, so beautiful. And I knew Michaela was talented, and I knew Megan, who's their sister. She's an amazing Irish dancer, absolutely. She's came third in the world a couple of years ago. So she, I knew they were all talented, but I was blown away by this. And Michaela done most of the singing all night then with the band that was in, in, the re in the reception and then it was a case of, I think there was was there three or four of them, it was Megan, Michaela, Katie, there was either three or four of them done the Irish dance in and they done, this was in between her day and all the singing all day, um, they done Hey Little Pusher by, N is it Neil? Or N Nelly I think to Irish dancing and I'd never seen anything like it and it was amazing and Michaela came off and she was, there, was all like right you've still to sing and she was like <gasps> and so they were kind of like encouraging people to go up to sing so I think it was George's I'm sure it was George's hobby was supposed to get up um, oh, I can't remember his name that's terrible anyway it was one of my cousin's uh, husband's like a bit a chant to sell but he's his family's in a band and I didn't realise that. I didn't know that. Um and so I was like, right I was a wee before I was a wee bit tipsy so I thought, I'll bugger it. I'm getting up to sing. 
So I went, can I, can I sign? And they were like, what do you want to sign? But it feels cool, David Cassidy. And I got up. And to this day, I still didn't you know whether I was good or no, but for the confidence, I think I sung about, I think I sung a verse and a chorus. And I said to the guy, what key do you sing in? And he went, you see, but I would go, I would go for a B. He went, by the way, you've got a good, you've got a nice tone to your voice. I know you're no, and fair play to you, my girl. He says, do you, you're the one that's got the voice edition. I went, I hence me doing this. That was my pre-rehearsal. And I still believe if I hadn't got up and done that, I wouldn't be sitting here the day making these videos, recording demos, contemplating becoming a professional singer, and contemplating studying music. My aim is to get a degree in drama and a degree in music, and then hopefully a degree in history. So there are my three aims. There are my three aims. I want a career in singing or acting, whatever. Um, I do believe. In town, I could probably teach singing. I could probably teach music, but I would I would need to do it in a school environment or a college environment. I would do it at private lessons because of my autism. I would find that really difficult. I think, but it's something I've always been good at. It's something I was never encouraged to do, or I was always told, "Oh, well, you shut up," or "You need to do this," or whatever. There was a very there was there were few people in my life who told me I was a good singer. Those people are still standing behind me today, so they are always, always never, let, never let them down, or try not to let them down. Um, and the confidence thing. So um, and you'll get um um um, and I'm going to have to edit this all together because it's really a big long rant. Uh, so that's my story and that's why I'm doing video blogs. For anyone that has is on the spectrum and has a dream and doesn't believe in themselves, go for it. The worst that can happen is that you don't succeed. That's the worst that can happen. And I've learned that through having life experiences. And as my attitude is get through, don't get through. I'm still here, I'm still alive, I'm still kicking, I'm still living my life and it's just another missed opportunity or an experience to look at and so the moral of the story is I feel proud. So anybody that thinks I'm a, mm -mm, I'm away with the fairies or I'm in my bubble, maybe I am and maybe this is the way I get through loss, right? And but. I'm doing positive things and who's to say that I'm not that one is it one in a million they say who's to say I'm not that one in a million you never know I've put my life my heart my everything into this in the last year and a half everything there's not a day that I don't get up I can get up and I feel really crappy but I still sing I sing about the host, da, la, 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 and I just, and there's two, three hour, two, at least an hour a day I concentrate on singing, at least an hour a day, and that doesn't matter even if I've had a really busy day, um, and so the culmination is, there's going to be a gig at the Gilmerton Society Hall, last week in June, First week in July. Audition. July the 9th. Glasgow. Voice. Audition. Voice UK. 11th of July. Warm up act for the band night at Napier Uni in, 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 in aid of autism initiatives. Um, number six. The place that's really changed my life. Other than the people. The pe People have changed my life, and a place has changed my life. And the place is called Number Six, and it's called Auto. It's um, the one-stop shop for autism. There's incentives everywhere. There's a cafe that is run by um, service users of Number Six. There's a gallery on the corner, also staffed by service users. And I think there's a place at Hermitage. That, um, does a wee cafe and it's a golf place and so there's gardening opportunities there's three 
business opportunities. Right, right there. There's talented artists. There's talented singers. There's talented writers. There's so many talents in that one spe spe um, one place, and it's a charity. It's so we wouldn't be able to do the things we do. We go day trips. We go tr uh, we um. We go holidays with each other and we do just basically loads of positive, amazing things. Plus they help you get your house and house together, like help you with budgeting, um, make sure your personal care's up to scratch, make sure your house is kind of running in order and, and basically get you socialising. Um, so... To anyone that wants to come to the, the Napier, Uni, Napier Uni gig band night, um, I think it's £5 at the door. It's been organised by Kieran Colville and, uh, Col or Colville, I don't know, Kieran, you need to tell me how you say your name. And Vig Vivian Schlacker, Schackerman, or Schackerman, Viv, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your second name, but Miss Viv Akola, um, and she's a very intelligent woman. Um, and so I will be the warmer pact. I can't even remember the name of the axe, but it's basically heavy metal rock. A bit of, it's a bit of like metal, thrash, rock. So it's really band stuff. And as, as you know, my forte is country and folk. But I can rock it a good rock song. So I'm going to learn, I think I know most of the words to living on a prayer. Um, I'm going to do some Bon Jovi, some Poison. Aerosmith and a Mike Day Journey. So, and if if anybody else can give me another suggestion, on you go. Um, I think I'm doing half an hour. So hence I'm hiring the Government Society Hall for an hour, either the first week, uh, the 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 last week in June, first week in July. So that's my big massive update, Kim Angel fans. So um, I have now made it. I will now be making a separate page on YouTube. For video blogs, personal video blogs about either my autism, my socialising, if I'm having a shitty day or if I'm having a great day. Uh, and also, I didn't ever think at the start of this process that I would be writing my own songs. I have now wrote eight, that I think, eight songs. There's probably about 12 there that are a bit itchy, but there's eight complete songs with the lyrics and music done. Um, so I'm starting to learn the guitar. I'm hopefully getting into a course at Edinburgh College for Performance Arts National Certificate, um, which I went to the interview the other day there. Um, it went pretty well because we'd done acting, movement, and we'd done singing. Um, and we'd done improv, believe it or not. And that was really interesting to see, oh, do you know, see if I'm doing college for this. It might be six hours, seven, might be six to ten hours a week. I don't care. I really am interested in the subject so much that I will not be bored. And plus, the stuff that she wants me to learn, I probably already know. She was talking about Calamity Jane. I, obviously, I was the oldest one in the class, we were nearly 40. Um, and a lot of them are just life school or early 20s. So, they were sitting, maybe they, didn't, maybe they were embarrassed to say they knew what Calamity Jane was, but I just... The teacher started to sing one of the songs for coming. Oh, I just came in from the Windy City and I went, The Windy City is mighty pretty, but it ain't got what we got. I'm telling you why I wouldn't sit, change the Windy City for the whole of Illinois. And she was like, Ah! someone that knows their stuff and as we were so we sung three songs we sung good morning but we're from hairspray so ah 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 woke up today and i can't do any rest of it because it's just went completely out my head chica tita by abby eh, no we done two songs we were supposed to do three songs we done chica tita by abba chica tita tell me the truth that one ah, ah, ah. So shy and quiet. And we were supposed to do Castle on the Clouds, which is on my YouTube. I am a castle on a cloud. I like 
like to go there in my sleep when there aren't any floors for me to sweep not on my castle or no cloud so um and i will know in the maximum of two weeks time if i've got my performance arts court so Get through on the voice. Don't get all through on the voice. I'd probably be studying music, um, studying performance arts, which will obviously help me become a better performer and singer. Um, and I think now that I think I probably am capable of writing songs. Well, I know I'm capable of writing songs, but I want to learn instruments. So the first instrument I've ordered is a guitar. Um, and I've never ever played the guitar. I know a few people that can play the guitar. Um, really amazing guitar players like Gordon and Ralph and there's a few other people. Um, there's a couple of people at number six that can play the guitar so they'll help me out. Um, so YouTube will be learning musicals, learning songs and learning the guitar. So wish me luck in the next couple of months. Um, I will try, I'll probably do a video blog update once a week. Depending on if it's been a boring and slow week, it'll not be once a week, it'll maybe be once every two weeks. But it's it's just to, as I say, anyone with any mental health issues and you have a dream, just go for it. You never know what could happen. Okay, that's the end of that video vlog. Goodbye.